This video is sponsored by Lester. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we've got the Ducky 1 2 Mini up for review today. I've had this keyboard for a long time now. I just never actually got to reviewing it. If you do purchase this, despite it being 2021 and this came out several years ago, it's really not a purchasing decision I would ever regret making. This board basically can be described as a jack of all trades, but I really want to point out that the customization of this board is what really draws me to it. Despite being a stock board, there are so many things, so many options that you can do to customize this board to really fit into your lifestyle. Whether you're a gamer, a programmer, just a regular typist, just working from home or whatever, you can make this work for you. It's a 60% board, but it has a lot of function. More function than many of the other larger boards that I see around town. Let's jump into the review. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and this is the Ducky 1 2 Mini. It's a really popular board. I've seen a lot of people use this board, and it gained popularity several years back. And keyboards have really evolved since then. We've got a lot more features that are popping up in the budget range, such as hot swappability, wireless and Bluetooth, maybe even a wireless dongle. We've got optical switches. There's just a lot going on. When this keyboard came out, it was basically ahead of its time. Time with the high quality build, the USB C port, the PBT keycaps, the RGB, the firmware, pretty much everything was like, whoa, that is an amazing board and well worth its price in its quality and its function. Now in 2021, can you say that the Ducky 1 2 Mini is still worth it? Personally, I can, and I stand by that decision 100%. It's a high quality board and it does a lot of things really well. Let's jump into what's in the box. All right, in the box, of course, you get the keyboard itself. It's very typical of a ducky board with the white bottom and the black top. We'll talk about the star of the show later. It also comes with the Zodiac space bar here. I've already put it on the board because I prefer that look better, but originally it does come with just a bland black PVT space bar with the ducky logo on the front side. You get the cable and all of its rubber kinks and you can straighten it out. It just takes a little bit of a while and it does have a Velcro cable tie right here just to make it easier to carry around. I do use this cable despite what it looks like because this keyboard doesn't work with my Tez Cables E-Series. It's a little bit unfortunate. You also get your recyclable plastic dust cover. Again, I don't use these. It's great to have and you know, I get hair and cat hair and dog hair and my hair pretty much on everything and I'm just gonna have to live with that. This is really convenient though if you want to protect your keyboard. You also get the Ducky branded keycap puller. It's wired, it's very easy to use. It also has a little hole on top if you do want to attach that to a keychain or something that's easy to keep track of where your wired keycap puller is. I lose those a lot. You don't really get a manual. You get this warranty information sheet that you can fill out and it says that it has one year warranty from the day of your purchase. And then if you do want the manual, you can follow the pathway on the back of the card to go to their website to download the manual. But if you don't wanna do that, I'll include the link to the product page where you can download the manual down below. Alongside that, you can pretty much just look up Ducky 1 2 Mini Manual on Google. And alongside that, it does come with some additional keycaps from Ducky. You get the Ducky Escape key, you get the colored backspace enter and shifts, as well as the arrow keys for I, J, K, and L. I don't have those with me because they are on our Ducky 1 2 SF. But just know that you get that. We got blue, but there's a random assortment of colors that you can get from and it's pretty much all the colors of the rainbow. Do you ever browse website after website looking for the best products only to see that everyone is recommending something different and you're left more confused than where you started? You know, I don't really always have time to read everything. So I just pick a product and then I realize I didn't even pick the best product and I didn't even get a good price for it. If you ever felt the same way, you're going to love Luster. 
It's a free shopping tool that does all the product research and comparison for you. It analyzes expert reviews from sources that you already trust, like Wirecutter, Reddit, and YouTube. And then it recommends the best products for your needs and your budget right where you shop. It even compares prices across stores like Best Buy, Target, Walmart, so you can always get the best price. It'll tell you when something is on sale or if the product had a recent price jump, so you know the best times to buy. With Luster, you can shop smarter and get the best products with the best price without wasting time and energy. Check out the Luster link in the description below. It's completely free to use. And that's pretty much all you get in the box. At the back of the board, you can see that there are a bunch of rubber feet, plenty of rubber feet to keep, keep your keyboard from sliding around during those intense gaming moments or speed typing moments, depending on what you do. You get two dual angle adjustable kickstands in the back here, and you can see the flat angle of it just directly on the desk. And that's fairly low. I don't need to use a wrist rest with this board at all. It does have OEM profile keycaps, which is a little bit higher than what I'm used to, but the angle of the board is pretty low and easy to work with. You can bump up the angle if you want. It goes up pretty high and I don't use the highest angle at all, but you know, if you're into that, you absolutely can. You have your dip switches here and they're fairly small. So maybe get like tweezers to edit them or something. But with these dip switches, you can read in the manual what they do, but you can change the layout of these four keys in the bottom right here. And that's their primary purpose. Gonna have to look at the manual for that because I don't remember it at the top of my head. At the back here, you got your USB-C port on the top left side and you got your Ducky 1 2 Mini branding on the right side. It's pretty typical of a Ducky board. If you have the 1 2 SF, you'll see that branding right there as well. And the build quality is pretty much all plastic, but despite that, it's a pretty durable board. It's got the typical Ducky look with the white bottom plastic case and the black top case. It's got pretty thin bezels all around and I really like that. It just makes it easier to type in a comfortable position. You can rest your hand on the desk while gaming without worrying about how much extension your wrist is going into. So build qualities pretty good. As far as branding goes, all you get is that on the top right. And then you have some ducky branding on the spacebar. Whether you choose the original black spacebar or the Zodiac spacebar, it still has a ducky branding on it. But people are going to recognize that it's a ducky keyboard from pretty far away if they know what that looks like. It is a 60% board, but despite its limiting size, its function pretty much makes up for all of that. It's got a bunch of different layers that you can work with. There's the standard layer of course, which is what you're used to without holding on to anything. There's the FN layer that lets you access the function row, the media keys, and a lot of other things going on too. You got the FN and alt layer that lets you do RGB editing, debounce delay, like Minesweeper or the games, whatever's on here. And then you have your FN and shift layer that lets you access the different RGB modes without having to cycle through it. So a lot of stuff going on. In addition to that, if you read the manual, you can also program up to six profiles on the board too for macros. And then you can also edit the RGB and it does have per key RGB editing too. So a lot of options here, a lot of customization. It does take some time to read through the manual to figure out the different steps that you need to follow and to get it to be exactly what you want to be. But after you do all that, it's pretty much saved onto the board and you can say this is your Ducky 1 2 Mini. Someone else might have a hard time using it, but you know, you got it in the bag because it's yours. As far as keycaps go, these are double shot PBT keycaps with RGB shine through. The legends are super, super clean. The RGB shines through very nicely. There's no separations in your legends. And despite it having side printed legends for the secondary functions, if your backlight is on pretty bright, you can absolutely see them even in dim lighting because the bounce back from the plate emits light up and you can see them really easily. And I would say that's an absolute must because there are so many secondary functions that it's just gonna be hard to remember all of them. It's just gonna take a little bit of time as far as switches go, there are so many different options that you can pick from. I bought mine from mechanicalkeyboards.com. You can use code switch and click uh, to support us if you're shopping on there anyways. They have Cherry switches, Gyron switches, TTC switches, Kale switches, and 
In addition to all those basic switches, you also get options to pick the speed or the silent versions as well. So a lot of options going on here. It is not hot swappable. So whatever switch you pick, you're pretty much stuck with unless you have a desoldering gun and you're willing to go through all that. And then, you know, but if you're doing that, you might as well just buy a custom keyboard or a hot swappable keyboard. The stabilizers are all pretty good. There's nothing to complain about really. Stabilizers are pretty unique in the way that they are colored. You have the blue stabilizer housings and then the stems are gray. So something a little bit different, I suppose. At a closer inspection, I can say that I don't think they are prelude from the factory, but they sound pretty dang good, so who cares? We're gonna do a typing test. Um, I have the Ducky 1-2 Mini with the Cherry MX black switches and everything else is stock. So typing test right now. All right, that was the typing test. Uh, if you could hear it, there is quite a bit of spring ping. I can't blame that on the board, but rather, I mean, they're stock switches, so it's pretty normal for them to come with some spring ping. But I think the board does amplify that just a little bit where you're just pressing things around and you can really hear that. Uh, it may not be a problem to most of you, but to, to those of you who are a little bit sensitive to those high pitched sounds or you have really sensitive hearing, that may be something that you can think about. All right, let's go through some of the R2B effects. So it does have onboard effects that you can cycle through using FN, Alt, and T. Several effects to go through here and we'll look at them right now. There are two different RGB zones that you can customize to your own preferences. For example, if you're gaming at night and you want WASD, maybe QER, and maybe Control Shift and Tab to be lit up, you can do that. And if you want I, J, K, and L to be lit up, you can do that too. So it is editable. To turn on the first zone, it's F, N, Alt, and G. The second zone is F, N, Alt, and B. To edit both zones, you're going to hold F, N, Alt, and Caps Lock for about three seconds. Then you'll see G and B light up by itself. And that's where you pick whether you want to edit zone one or zone two. If you edit zone one, you press G and then uh, what you can do is pick the color that you want by holding caps lock and either Z, X, or C. And those are the different levels of brightness within each color. So you have red, but you also have green and blue, and you can move those up or down to get the color that you want. And the color that you are using is the one under caps lock. After you set that color, you can press all the keys that you want to be in that color. And you'll just repeat that for the colors that you want. To take away a color from a key, you'll just press it again and then it has no color. To erase everything, you press caps lock and V and they'll undo everything that you just did. And you know, once you get everything that you want, you can just press caps lock and left shift to exit this RGB editing mode. Now that does get a little bit complicated. What I personally like to do is just go to the static color and then press FN, Alt, and spacebar to go to the color palette and then I'll press a single color 
and that's it that's the static color that i picked and that's it's easy as that it is customizable if you want to and that's the great part it's if you don't want to you don't need to if you do want to like that option is there alongside that it also has macro recording as i said before there's six profiles that you can edit however there are uneditable keys and those are fn and caps lock you absolutely cannot change those but other than that everything else is pretty much up for grabs and despite it being a 60 percent board i found myself switching to it pretty easily transitioning to a 60 percent layout without being like, oh my gosh, I, I hate this. There's no delete in the place that I want it. There's no arrow keys in the place that I want it. It's really easy to get used to the Ducky One Two Mini. So what's my verdict on the Ducky One Two Mini? Clearly there are some downsides here. Having no software makes it a little bit harder. There's no just a visual interface that you can click things and move things around. You're gonna have to read the manual to get whatever you want out of it. But it basically is a plug and play board. You can plug it straight into your computer and be like, hey, let's go, let's game, we're good. Or you can tinker with all the little things. Despite all those difficulties, I suppose it's an amazing board. It has pretty much everything that you might get in a full-size keyboard and more all in its compact design alongside that the rgb looks absolutely amazing and you don't need bulky software to be on all the time to get the effects and to get the colors and the macros that you want with that being said you can transfer it from computer to computer without being like oh no i need to download this software and I, oh no i need to like sync it up oh no like what am I gonna do? It's it's all on the board. Everything is on the board, the memory. My verdict on the Ducky One Too Many is that it's a purchase that I would never regret. I personally don't even like 60%, but it's a board where I can switch to it pretty comfortably and not feel like I'm missing a significant portion of my keyboard while using it. But back to the question, is the Ducky One Too Many still good in 2021 with all these keyboard options out there? It's a yes. It's an absolute yes. You can pick it up for about $100, maybe $110, maybe $120 if you're, you know, looking for more expensive switch options. For $100, it's a great deal if you want a 60%. And if you're shopping at mechanicalkeyboards.com, remember to use code switch and click at checkout to support us. Other than that, you know, you can get it on Amazon if you want to. Links for everything will be down below. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, I'm finally done with Ducky. Mm, no, I have a Ducky Mia Pro left.